market has gone completely bonkers. UK house prices are growing at the fastest rate since August 2007, which was when we bought our first house. Um, So yeah, a long time ago. But what does this mean for anyone trying to move or buy their first property? Well, let's have a chat to somebody who knows a bit about what's going on at the moment. And he's happy to take any questions from you today, whether it's uh, about mortgages or insurance advice. It's Graham Taylor from Hudson Rose Mortgage Brokers in Nailsworth and Sirencester. Hello, Graham. Hey, Faye, how are you doing? Yeah, good. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm good. There should have been a little fanfare there before the Hold on a one, minute. Yeah, let, got one? Hold on a minute. Come on. This, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, blah, blah, blah. Graham Taylor, Nailsworth and... Sirencester. That's more like it. Come on. <laughs> what sort of show are you running, eh? This is... You feel welcome and warm. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm well. I'm well. I've had my hair done this morning, so I'm currently sat in our nails office. And because my hair, as you know, is a, is a, is a silly Mohican, I don't want to squash it. So I've got my headphones on kind of over the back of my head, like, uh, like you know, the, the Band-Aid single from the 80s where they're yeah. sort of holding one side. I'm looking a bit like that. So if anyone's passing and they've got the radio on the car, they'll see me <laughs> <laughs> doing my best, uh, was it George Michael impression? So, yeah. What is that man doing in his office? That's exactly. what they're thinking. That was, hey. hey, it was nice to meet you the other day. I was in Nailsworth meeting up with a friend. I thought, do you know what? I'm going to pop in and see Graham yeah. and um, you you know, you don't know what I look like because we we talk on the radio. But yeah, um, nice office, and you Thank have you, you are expanding. You've got a, an office in Sirencester, yeah. so congratulations! Was that a big decision to expand? We have expanded. Well, it was kind of um, yeah. I suppose it was. It was one of those things where we've got kind of outgrown the space here, and I'd always I've worked in Sirencester for many years, and my wife's grandfather and grandparents are from Sirencester. I know Siren really well. I love it. And this place came up and I thought, yeah, why not? So we, we opened uh, Monday, just just gone, beginning of the week. And uh, we've already had people coming in, asking us questions, helping people with their mortgage and insurance needs in Siren, Sester and the surrounds. So no, really happy to be there. We're down on Dyer Street. So we're the, um, near the traffic lights that people queue up. So I think we're getting the same quizzical looks that we got when we opened Nailsworth, which is, what is that place? <laughs> um, which is great. So yeah. Oh, fantastic. Well, that's that's wonderful to hear. So let's talk about what is going on at the moment. As I mentioned, the UK property market has has gone completely bonkers. Um, so why is this happening? Why is it happening? I guess it's a, I mean, we could drill down into it all day and probably still be none the wiser. Uh, you mentioned some stats at the beginning. I said the stats I've seen is the highest levels of house prices since November 2004, according to Nationwide. So it's um, it's quite something. It's a combination of factors. Look, the pandemic meant that people reassessed what was uh, what was important and what they wanted from from life. So you know that led to people looking to move property, get that extra bedroom, or have a home office because people are working from home. Um, and then also coupled with sort of a need to, you know, the fact that they could don't have to be in the centre of the city anymore because home work has become a bit more the norm. Um, and it just went a bit nuts, fueled, of course, by the government's stamp duty cut. Um, they brought in about a year ago, about July last year, and has just changed. So I think it was a bit of a perfect storm, um, you know, reevaluing priorities, realising maybe what you had wasn't what you wanted, and just being able to be free from having to be within that 20 minute or half hour commute or whatever it might be mm. to wherever it is you work. So it has been a bit mental. Um, yes. So, I mean, great if you're trying to sell a house. Um, we're hearing about houses going in auction, sealed bids, yeah. houses going for way over the asking yeah. price. This happened to a friend of mine who lived in Gloucestershire, then Reading, trying to move back to Gloucestershire, sold their house, um, thought that they were on the road to buying this house in in Stroud. Mm. And then it went for £150,000 after the original asking price. I mean, that is just unbelievable. So, Mm. yeah, we're hearing some not very nice stories about people being evicted by landlords because Mm. those landlords and landladies want to sell their houses and, and make hay whilst the sun shines. Yeah, very very apt today with the sun shining. It, it, it's been it has been tricky. There there are things that you can do to best prepare yourself. Unfortunately, it's the house buying process is just tricky in England and Wales. I mean, it's tricky everywhere, but certainly in, in, in England and Wales, you know, there there is money at risk until you exchange contracts. You know, there's all the the legal stuff that goes with it. And unfortunately, if there's somebody 
bidding on that house with deeper pockets than you and you know with a with a with a lot of cash then it's it's very hard to to combat that but preparation is everything i mean that's what we say to our clients is before you start even looking at properties is to get a feel for your budget um we've had this conversation before fate i'm a massive fan of budget planners I think the greatest invention known to man, you know, just just literally jotting down your your income uh, and, and and your outgoings and getting a feel for how much you've got, and then taking that to to someone a professional that can then match that against well, what is somebody going to lend you? And that and that is the first step before you even start looking at properties because otherwise, as you say, you could end up in a bidding war. You don't know how much you can get to, and ultimately, you could be disappointed. Okay, stay there, Graham, and uh, we'll just break for a little bit of music and we'll come back to you in a few minutes' time. If you've got a question for Graham, uh, we are talking about mortgages and making that first leap if you're trying to get on the property ladder. Uh, 0800 121 7575. Meanwhile, music. Stay here until 2. My guest this afternoon is Graham Taylor. We're talking about mortgages and how to make that step, that first step onto the property ladder. Graham, I saw um, a bit of research out this week saying that half of UK homeowners who bought during the pandemic regret how much they paid. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm one of them. Are I you? Bought, I, I bought in the pandemic. But you don't regret it, do you? No. No, I'm every... Oh, no. No, but, but it's, it's also, you know, you've got to remember... And it's you've got with these sorts of things, you've got to think, how are these questions posed to people? Because yeah. if you're buying a house as a home, it's a home, man. That, that, that's where you've got to live. That's... It, buy it as a home first and foremost. If you're buying an investment property, it's a different kind of thought process. You buy more with your your head than your heart. But if you're going to live there for 10, 15, 20 years, does it matter? I don't know. I mean, as long as it's the right place for you, then uh, you need to. I think people just need to be be happy and, and not. We get very hung up about house prices in this country, don't we? Yeah. Um, rightly so, because it's difficult to buy. And it is expensive, and they are completely rising you know uh, more than the than wages are which is a, a a real problem and we need more supply but i always say to us if you're buying a home and it's the right home for you that's good enough isn't it yeah no i think that's uh, that's really sound advice um if you if you're buying to make an investment that's completely different motivation so you shouldn't regret if um if no. you've bought, bought a home a nice home for your family i mean Exactly. Yeah. Um, something else that I saw this week, and we have talked about self-employed people before on this uh, section. Um, so some of Britain's biggest high street banks are refusing to give mortgages to self-employed people who receive government grants during the pandemic. Um, mortgage brokers say those working in sectors like entertainment, hospitality and travel are the worst affected. Now, we have touched on this before, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. And it's sad to say that, you know, there is an element of truth in that. It is more tricky for uh, the self-employed to uh, secure mortgage finance. It's always been slightly more tricky, but it's been made a little bit more tricky by by the pandemic. Now, some of these issues aren't as they first appear. Here's a bit of an inside inside scoop, if you will, because I was having a chat with someone in a lender uh, who remained nameless the other day. And one of the reasons they were saying to me was that the fact that these very big lenders have a very automated process in terms of underwriting. So, you know, you, they want certain documents, they look at certain documents, they tick them off and say, those are the figures we need and, and off they go. Because the sort of self-employed grants and the last 12 months and income and all this kind of stuff's made it a bit more difficult, is that they're unable, they don't have the processes to be able to offer and underwrite in the way that they might need to, to offer those self-employed people a mortgage. So it's not that they don't want to, it's that they can't. So I'll give you an example. So um, self-employed individuals, for the most part, if you're applying for a mortgage, a lot of lenders will say, you know, show us your tax return from April last year if you haven't done this year's, um, but then show us your last three months uh, business bank statements to show the amount of turnover because then they can get some comfort that the, the figure they're using from a year ago is sustained by the bank statements they've got today. But that requires someone to actually look at those bank statements and sign them off and everything else. And there's some of these very big high street lenders that just don't have the staff to do it. So whilst it is difficult for self-employed, some of it is just down to system issues. And for every lender that has a problem with it, there'll be someone somewhere that won't. So getting advice, of course, I'm always going to say, is, is always key. But if, uh, you know, if, if, if your business hasn't been affected and, you, and you've managed to kind of sort of um, navigate the last tricky 12 months and we can demonstrate that, then there are lenders out there. You are right. You know, certain um, certain industries, certain professions have had a really tough time. Entertainment, you know, if, you, if, you're, a, if you're a professional nightclub dancer, it's going to be tricky to demonstrate that that business has maintained over the last 12 months yeah. and not sustained it doing something else. So that is unfortunate, but time will heal that. Um, and uh, I say, you know, it, it's just about lining your documents up, 
getting advice and putting it with the right lender because, like I say, there's always an option out there. Okay, Graham, are you okay to just to hold on over the news because I want to talk to you about people who who do want to move or buy their first property yeah. and what what you need to do um, to get into the best possible position. We'll speak to Graham after the news. Old snaky hips, Ricky Martin, she bangs on BBC Radio Gloucestershire. My thanks to Duncan on the news. He's back with you tomorrow. I'm here tomorrow as well. I'll tell you about that later on. I'm sitting in for Kate this week. Seven minutes past one. It's Faye here. Uh, music still to come in this final hour of this programme from uh, a Welsh band. They've just finished mixing their 12th album in their 25th year and it should be out by the end of 2021. Find out who that is later on. Uh, it's not looking to too clever on the M5 southbound today. Lots of holiday traffic. Well, you can see why. Look at it. It's beautiful out there. Severe delays. Stop start queues on the M5 between junctions 14 and 21. It is now adding 1 hour 35 to journey times there. If you've seen anything out and out and about today, uh, you can give us a call. Jack's picking up your calls this afternoon. 0800 121 7575. Graham is still on the line. Graham, are you yeah. all right? Graham Taylor. I am. You, you were. Right? I, I thought when you said old snaky hips, I thought that was my introduction. I was thinking, <laughs> well, that's a, that's a new one. I was like, well, you know, that's maybe. All my, all my professionalism just out the window in I one have, sentence there. I don't think I have anything in common with Ricky Martin, unfortunately. He's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, he's, he's not a patch on me. He's a god, isn't he? He is a <laughs> he god. Is. He is, he is god. brilliant. brilliant. But you, you know, you're a god of of the mortgage mortgage world. Yes. Let's, and let's... when and when when mortgages become as popular as Latin pop, I'm going to be <laughs> at the forefront. So <laughs> sexy mortgages. Yeah. yeah that's what we want. Come yeah. on. Yeah. So Graham is a regular on this program, and uh, this is your this is your bag, isn't it? Mortgages, it is. and we we've been talking about what has gone on recently with the UK. UK property market it's very buoyant at the moment mm. um, but what about those people who are trying to move or buy their first property so where does it leave people like that where you know we're hearing people are just getting outbid if you've got like you said earlier on bigger pockets you don't stand a chance yeah yeah well it's always the way and as I kind of alluded earlier on it's about preparation it's uh, it's really tempting, isn't it, to jump on the the the, the portals, the you know the, the the home buying portals, and look at all the properties and dream and and look at things and think, oh, I could probably afford that in terms of you know monthly payments and all that sort of stuff. Because you think I'm paying whatever it is I'm paying in rent, and I've done a mortgage calculator, and that's the same, so that'd be fine, won't it? And that's the problem is that how much you can borrow, judged by a lender, isn't always the same as what so what you're paying in rent. So often you'll find that if you're paying. £800 a month in rent, you'll think, oh, I can have an £800 a month mortgage, but they might lend you slightly less because of the calculations they do. So what you need to do to combat that disappointment and ultimately sort of a, a bit of a waste of your time is to plan ahead. It's just it's just mortgages are, and, and, and house buying is a complex process, but if you break it down into little chunks and little steps, like anything in life, it becomes a lot easier. So the first thing is to look at, is just to know your numbers. So if you're employed, is to work out and know what is my gross salary? What am I getting paid before tax each year? And then as well as any bonuses, put them to one side. And if you're self-employed, it's again, it's about knowing your numbers, it's about getting your paperwork all together, accounts finalized, and knowing what you are, are taking home in either salary or dividends or net profit if you're a sole trader. So once you know those bits, you then look at your outgoings. And again, it's as simple as just listing out what am I spending on gas, electricity, food, your essential expenditure um, every month. And that, Basically, what you've done there is a budget planner, which is the basis of everything in life in finance, I would say, is a budget planner. Um, the next step, once you've got your budget planner, is a little bit trickier because you've got to know what to do with those numbers. And that's where someone like uh, us come into the frame because we can help you complete that budget planner, but then also talk you through it and then explain to you what lenders are going to do with those numbers and ultimately give you a figure that you can then buy at. And then once you've got that, you've got your, your, your figure that you can buy at, you've got uh, had a credit check with a lender, you've got your, what's called a decision of principal certificate, then you can jump on those property portals and start um, start looking at properties and go into view some. That's where the fun starts. Um, let's just talk briefly about deposits. Um, mm. We, I mean, me personally, we had some help from a family member and we are so grateful to, to this family member for helping us because we wouldn't have been able to buy mm. a house um, in Gloucestershire 
Um, and, and we're paying our money back, by the way. But um, I, I heard somebody wise uh, say that, you know, if you can borrow from family members, that is much better than going going to a bank. Um, and I'm just thinking, is it is it a good time to invest in our young if, if we've got a little bit, perhaps, you know, uh, yeah. we've retired, we've got a bit of disposable income? Um, there's lots you can do with that. Yeah, there's lots there. You've got to be, you've got to be aware of one thing, first of all, is that generally lenders won't accept a loan as a deposit. If the money is gifted and there's no legal right over it, that's generally accepted. If you then choose to pay them back at a later date, well, that is up to you, but there can't be any legal charge over the property or from the people that gifted that money. Family help is massive. I mean, the amount of clients we see where, where that has come into play. And you're right, it's because the older generation who have maybe paid their mortgage off, they've benefited from the house prices going up over the last you know, 20, 30 years, whatever it might be, are now sitting on that equity. And aside from sort of drawing it out and getting a mortgage themselves, there are a few fancy schemes that I won't go into here that allow lenders to kind of take a little bit of a charge over the parent's property so you can borrow. Tend to, you know, in, in theory, it's 100% lending, but it's not because they're taking a charge over someone else. So there's there's lots that can be done. And it, we, we explore that with clients. You know, we'll talk about, is there any help in the background? Unfortunately, it's not always possible. And there's some government schemes out there like help to buy that allow you to buy with just a 5% deposit, but benefit from better rates. But generally, the, the news is good on deposits because if we were having this conversation six months ago, I'd have been telling you that there was, you know, you need at least 10% of the purchase price, if not more. Now we've got 95% more, which is again, so you'll need 5%, which is brilliant. So don't give up hope. If you're if you're just um, feeling a bit deflated by, you know, seeing all these houses moving very quickly for lots of money, you should you yeah. shouldn't give up. There's it sounds like there are there are options, but you need to talk to somebody. Yeah, there's a hundred, over a hundred lenders or whatever, all with different policy, all with different affordability amounts. How are you? You know, if you do this once every ten years, how are you ever going to know where to go? We 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 sit in this market day in day out. We do it two or three times a week with different clients. So um, and we love it. So you know, people might feel people with dread and think, "Oh, I've got to do that." Well, you know, we we genuinely enjoy what we do because it's uh, it's a fun place to be. Um, so watch out, Ricky Martin. Because <laughs> Graham, where can people find you um, and find out more about what you do? You can find us on on Instagram and on, on Facebook, Hudson Rose, and you can see us in Nailsworth on uh, Bridge Street uh, and also in Sirencester on Dyer Street. But just have a look around, a bit of YouTube. We're, we're all over. We're all over online. We're all over in, in the physical presence. So if anyone has any questions, give us a shout. And we can check out your new haircut as well. It's uh, yeah. pink, pinky purple Mohican. Yes, it is. It's uh, I, I forget which. I, I tend to sort of have it done like one of the um, My Little Ponies. So every time I go back, my three-year-old daughter <laughs> says, oh, you look like Twinkle Sparkle or Rainbow Dash or something it is. So I'll, I'll let you know when I get home which one it is this week. <gasps> Graham, lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, we'll speak again soon. Cheers, Graham Taylor from Hudson Rose in Nailsworth and Siren Sester.